Hey guys, so I thought it'd be fun to do a Beyond Meat valuation video. Now, at first, I wanted to do this as a podcast episode, but then I realized, you know, it wouldn't really work as a podcast. It's better to have the visualization. So I have this Excel sheet that I made. I'm going to leave it for download in the description for anyone who wants to mess around with it. So uh, basically, I have all the, all the stuff here needed to make a future prediction of the future value of Beyond Meat's price in 2030. Now, the reason I chose 2030 is because that's what I feel like the amount of time it's going to take for Beyond to get to these levels of uh, of valuation, obviously. Uh, the plant-based meat market is very young still. It's still in its infancy, basically. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going off 2030 predictions. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is all just purely for fun. Uh, you really want to take these with a grain of salt because none of us have any idea how big the plant-based meat market's going to be, if it's even going to be like a long-term thing, if it's not just a fad. I'm betting on that it's not a fad. I know a lot of you guys are betting it's not a fad too. So just keep that in mind. When you're betting on Beyond Meat, you're basically betting, making a huge gamble, a huge bet that plant-based meat will be the future or at least a small part of the future. So anyways, let's get into this, guys. So first off, firstly, we have Beyond Meat's current market cap, which is $8.7 billion. Their current shares outstanding, which is only 62 million shares outstanding, which is actually not bad at all for a company. I mean, they are, they are in their infancy. Um... This might be subject to change, so this is something we're going to have to keep in mind maybe if they end up issuing more shares in the future. But uh, Ethan Brown, the CEO, he really, I think, doesn't want to dilute the shareholders. He really wants his company and the stock to succeed, but we can mess around with that uh, to, to look at how that would affect the valuation. Uh, next up, we have the meat market size or the uh, estimated meat market size, the global meat market size in 2030, which is estimated to be $1.54 trillion. And I, I say that because right now I believe it's 1.3 or 1.4 trillion. So if you average in 10% population rise um, and or inflation, then that's where you get this uh, 1.54 trillion. Might be more, might be less. Who knows? I mean, I wouldn't think it's going to be less than it is now, but it could be more. Who knows? So then we have the plant-based meat market in 2030. If they're able to capture 5% of the uh, meat market. Now, I think there's two scenarios. Um, I did borrow some of this from the popular investor he's a really good youtuber and i agree with a lot of what he said but i disagreed with his uh, way that he he did the valuation he did the valuation purely based off gross margin um which i think was kind of confusing and kind of weird i don't know why he he tried taking a pe ratio using gross margin which you can't do that because obviously that's not a company's net profit um you know earnings are determined by net profit not gross margin or not gross profit so i'm doing this with a uh, their estimated net profit. So anyways, so there's, I'll, I'll go through two scenarios here. One of them is if uh, the plant-based meat market is able to capture 5% of the re regular meat market. And uh, the other one is if they're able to capture 10%. Now I'm really more on the side of the, I'm kind of in the middle actually. I think it might be around like 7%, but uh, we'll see. We'll, we have no idea. Um, I also have some statistics down here that I thought were just kind of interesting. Uh, the Gen Z world population size, the millennial world population size, Percentage of current vegans and vegetarians estimated in the world right now is 8%. Um, there was a survey that 65% of Gen Z want a more plant-forward diet. So 65% of 20% would be 13% of Gen Z. 7.5% uh, of millennials and Gen Z have given up meat. And 93% uh, 90, of Beyond Meat's customers are meat eaters. So I just thought these were all some interesting statistics we can maybe try to factor in here to uh, kind of determine the amount of market share the plant-based meat market can grab i'd say it's at least between five and ten percent based off these numbers maybe more maybe less although i can't really see it being less than five percent by 2030 i mean that seems kind of crazy that it wouldn't be at least five percent so anyways right here we have beyond's revenue if they capture 20 percent of the plant-based meat market by 2030 now you could argue that this is too conservative or it's too liberal i think it's probably right in the middle i mean beyond they have a first mover advantage um, in my opinion, they have the best products. They have the most brand recognition. Um, you know, they have the most, they have a ton of money going in R and D. They have the, all these partnerships now with McDonald's and everything. So this could be even higher. You know, you can mess around with this number yourself. So, but right now we have uh, 20%. I think that's a fair number. They're able to capture 20% of the plant-based meat market. And then their gross profit margin. I'm just going off their pre COVID profit margin. Um, that included retail, or not retail, that included food service before the whole COVID thing happened. So obviously I'm betting that the company's gonna, or not the company, 
the the country is going to open back up and that they're they're going to be able to get their gross profit margin back to at least 35 percent and who knows by 2030 um if they're able to really uh scale production in a way that they're able to reduce costs and everything uh who knows this could even go up to 45 percent 50 percent maybe even 60 percent so again you can mess with that uh however you want and then right here we have beyond meets gross profits um based on that margin and here we have the net profit net profit assuming a 10 percent margin so net profit uh the average net profit margin for a company is 10 percent. that's the average so i'm just going to go with that i'm assuming that they'll be able to get at least 10 percent of that and uh beyond has been able to turn a profit in the past not too long ago they were able to do that before COVID uh in 2019 i think the first quarter of 2020 so it has been proven that they can turn a profit although COVID has really hit them hard and they're also investing a, a lot of money into r d and uh gaining more market share so net profit assuming a 10 percent margin that would give them a net profit of 808 million dollars and uh for the pe multiple here this is where it gets kind of dicey and kind of hard um the average pe multiple for a company is around 15. now it's really really hard to say what beyond's pe multiple could be um typically for a growth stock uh, a fair pe multiple is their projected annual growth but even then that's not even true i mean some companies still end up having ridiculous pe multiples so i'm going to say again you could say this is conservative too that we're going to have three scenarios where they have a pe multiple of 20 30 or four, or 40 who knows how much they could still be growing uh yearly by by now it could still be 40 percent i'm predicting personally that they're gonna get beyond 40 percent pretty soon because of, again of these partnerships and everything um and obviously Gen Z and millennials and this whole paradigm shift that's happening right now. I'm predicting that they're going to start growing rapidly again pretty soon. So, I mean, who knows? This could be, yeah, whatever. 20, 20 to 40, I think that's a fair PE, PE multiple to have. So, and based off that PE multiple, that gets us the fair share price. That also gives us the current market cap or, or the market cap that they would have and their EPS for 2030. And also here I have the percentage gain from the price now. So, Anyways, so let's fiddle around with this now. We could fiddle around and uh, see what we get here. So if we want to switch this to the lower PE ratio, then that gets us a kind of a crappy 258, which is still 182% increase um, from now. So I think this is probably like one of the worst case scenarios is a uh, worst case scenario, 182% increase from the current price by 2030. Uh, if you want to say keep that at 40, then that brings us to 516, 363% increase. Now, if you... Uh, Say you think that they're going to issue more shares by then. Uh, bump this up to 80 million outstanding shares. That brings down the price to 404. You know, and again, th this is just the uh, this is just the rational, logical take on this. That's what evaluation is. It's a logical take. The market isn't necessarily going to follow logic. Who knows? This could go up way more. It could go up way less. Um, sorry, my dog just walked in the room. You know, whatever the hype is, the, the hype could take this thing to who knows, who knows what levels if this ends up being like another Tesla situation, you know, but so yeah, say the shares outstanding go up a little bit, but then you expect them to grow their profit margin. We could change this to 45%, see what that does. That bumps the share price back up to 520, you know, bump this down to 30, maybe P multiple, bump it down to 20, 260. So I still think, I mean, according to this valuation, Beyond is still relatively undervalued now compared to what it could be worth in the future even on the lower end you know um so if you want to get really crazy here we could uh do one of the best case scenarios say the plant-based meat market is able to capture 10 percent then we're looking at some pretty crazy stuff uh let's keep this at 35 um we could put that back to normal or we could keep it at 80 80 million i mean that might be a, a good thing there but then bump this up to 40 that gives you an 809 dollar share price and that has them uh, grossing 16 billion with a net profit of 1 billion, market cap of 64 billion. And let's say they're able to increase their profit margin here to 50%. Boom, that gets you a $1,155 share price. That's what we want to see, boys. I personally, I am not selling till at least $1,000. That is my price target for selling. So that'd be pretty awesome. Even 45, I think that might get us to 1,000. Yep. So if they're even able to bump up their gross margin uh, 10% within this 10-year period, and obviously if the plant-based meat market captures 10%, you know, then that's a pretty awesome scenario. 
Uh, we could do even 60%. I mean, that'd be crazy. But let's say they have 60%, and then we bump this down to back to 5%. 693, you know, with the 40 P, you know, with the 20. So you guys are see, seeing what's happening here. You know, it's, it's just fun to fiddle around with if you guys want to do so. Again, it's available for download in the description. So basically, that's it. Um, these are some possible scenarios. So again, if you're investing in Beyond, you're really betting on a paradigm shift in the future. And uh, we're just along for the ride. I think the best strategy right now is to dollar cost average, like every month, throw in a certain amount of money, whatever you can afford, and just start stacking shares, guys. We got a while, you know, before people really start to see the potential that they have in the future, um, before they really start delivering, I guess. Um, the McDonald's is going to be happening soon. Once the McPlant launches, I think that really might start getting the gears gears turning and people might start FOMOing at that point if uh, there's a lot of hype around that, if that starts selling really well, which I think it will. But uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, that's it. Um, next podcast will probably be relatively soon. Um, I just don't want to, you know, churn them out if I have nothing to say. I'm just trying to think of topics right now. I was thinking of, you know, other stocks that you could potentially be on the lookout for, other companies. Um, obviously, Eat Just. They got the Just Egg. They got the uh, Lab Grown Meat. They're a great company. Really looking forward to their IPO. I'm going to be pounding that. Although I hope, it, it, I feel like they're going to be really overvalued, though, for their IPO. So again, might want a dollar cost dollar cost averaging in anything almost seems like the best strategy because IPOs almost always end up taking a big dip. So if you could just wait for that dip or even invest half at first and then invest the other half on the dip or something, you know. But yeah, anyways, uh, thank you guys for the support on the podcast and everything. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this and comments. And I'm still looking for a host for the podcast. If you're interested in hosting, if you like Beyond Meat, you think you have something interesting to add to the conversation, hit me up in the comments and uh, we can make it work out, man. I'll get, I'm desperate now for any guest, any Beyond Meat lovers out there. I'm desperate. We're a very small community right now, but I know we'll be growing in the future. I know it. So anyways, have a good one, guys.